There are a lot of people who don't think we can kick our fossil fuel habit. It's too hard, it's too expensive, we're too late. Uh, but I think we can, and my story is really about how we might start. My partner and I have built what we think is North America's greenest hotel right here in Toronto, Planet Traveler. And by green, I'm not talking about recycled toilet paper. Global carbon emissions have got to come down by at least three quarters. We know this now. So I decided to set that goal for Planet Traveler, a three quarters cut in carbon, and see where I'd get. And when I started, I didn't have the slightest idea how to do it. I didn't know if it was possible. I didn't know geothermal from a hole in the ground, to be honest. But I did know, <laughs> but I did know, as someone who builds companies for a living, that it's got to be profitable if it's going to fly. So that was part of the experiment, that everything had to pay for itself. And I discovered something quite profound, which will be the moral of the story. But first, I'll tell you how we did it. The bad news is we have to throw out all the guidebooks. Lead, the rest of it, they don't come close to three quarters. They're inadequate. The good news is that everything we need has already been invented. So at Planet Traveler, we have geothermal heating and cooling. That's the workhorse of the hotel. So instead of a, a furnace, we suck heat out of the ground. And instead of air conditioning, we push heat into the ground. We, have, uh, we use the sun for hot water as well as a bit of electricity. We have efficient lighting. And we grab heat out of the drain before it hits the sewer. And that's it. That's enough to get you to the three quarters mark. The only problem we really had was we didn't have any place to bury the geothermal pipes. So we asked the city of Toronto, please maybe use this public laneway running beside the building. And the city responded beautifully. They're championing this idea now. As a matter of fact, Geothermal laneways throughout the city of Toronto is a real possibility. So it's kudos, really, to our mayor, David Miller, and the city, who really stepped up on this one. Well, it's all very good, uh, one might say, if you're just going to throw money at the problem. It's probably not hard to reach that target. But this is the kicker. The total cost of all that stuff was less than 5% of the building's value. And to put that in perspective, if I borrow that money against the building, the loan payments are less than what I save on the energy bills. So we're making money cutting carbon. This is a no-brainer. But my story, of course, is not really about uh, my little hotel. The moral is this. Buildings around the world account for 40% of our greenhouse gas emissions. And if everybody did what we did, we would cut global emissions by a third. And everybody who did it would be making money. This is low-hanging fruit. And I'll tell you how we pick it. There is a role for government here. So President Obama, Prime Minister Harper, backstop or force those commercial banks to lend money at low interest rates for these kind of retrofits. Better yet, mandate the retrofits. It creates local jobs, it cuts carbon, and it forms the basis of a new clean tech economy. That's an economic stimulus package. For 20 years, we've been frozen into inaction on climate change by bickering. And my story says we can kick the fossil fuel habit. And Planet Traveler offers a very simple and very constructive way forward. My name's Tom Rand. And if you want to know more about what I get up to, you can find me at tomrand.net. Thanks a lot.